first experience running at Icon Stadium was actually after college at the um, New York Diamond League back in 2000, I think 14 or 13. And it was such a big deal because we don't have a lot of public tracks that you can use. And it was such a beautiful facility with that shiny blue track bottom. And it was just like a, a really positive experience being able to um, run in a stadium that size in a meet that was so well attended. So I always had a great experience there because I actually had my best time in the steeplechase at that meet. And it again happened in 2015. Um, and most recently, Icon opened up their stadium to allow my track club to practice in a time where it was really hard to find places to get together safely. So that's been a real cha game changer, at least for me in the last couple months to help me get through training during uh, the last fall seasons. Yeah, so I guess Icon has really been there from the beginning. Um, the second meet that I ever ran in in my whole entire life was actually at Icon Stadium. It was the New York Relays. Um, and it was my first time doing a relay. Before then, my first meet was a dual meet. So you show up to Icon and it's this giant stadium, um, a full track. My high school track was actually short. So comparatively, it just felt so intimidating. I'm on the A relay as a seventh grader, no idea what I'm doing. And I remember I had to do the first leg of a four by mile. So I had to run four laps as fast as I could. And I ran a 512 uh, 1600. And that was the first time that I think I turned a couple heads where people were like, who let that kid on the track? How did she pass the baton off in first? <laughs> um, and I guess from there, it was just a long story of me and Icon having also raced at the Diamond League um, a couple times and having gotten my first ever Olympic trials qualifier in the 800 meters um, a few years later at the same New York Relays event. So I've been on that track many times racing, many times training, and have so many amazing memories from there. So my experience is a little bit different. The first time I ever went to Icon Stadium was for the Track Town Summer Series. I was actually a spectator, so it was my first pro meet I ever got to watch. Um, my coach at the time was like, if you want to see, if you want to be a pro, you need to watch the pros. So I went there um, and it was such an incredible experience, but I actually was able to get on the track and run, um, not against the pros, but against Mr. Freeze. I'm not sure if you guys know who he is, but he does like a hundred, hundred meter dash against everyone. So out of the hundred people, I was like jumping up and down being like, pick me, pick me. Um, I got picked and it ended up being on ESPN. And the one clip is he just beat me by one second. Um, obviously I got a head start. But it was definitely a great experience. It was like my five seconds of fame before. Um, and now I'm actually practicing there, which I never thought would happen. And now I'm with Central Park and I never thought this was an opportunity. I'm 29 years old. I really didn't start running again until after college until I was 25. So in 2017, that's kind of where I was able to see at Icon the pros. And it was like, wow, like if you can put your mind to something, you really can do it. Um, so I'm definitely so grateful for all this opportunity that I've had. I guess when I was younger, I had been a swimmer initially. So when I was an elementary schooler, um, I swam, you know, every other day, two hours in the pool each practice. And I think I had my head down so much as a swimmer um, that funny story, I think my younger self thought that I would qualify for the Olympics in both swimming and running, but never have to train for running to get there. And once I hit middle school, I realized that's not how any of this works. Running is really hard. And I realized that I had more of a love for running. And I think I've always been somebody with like one eye um, on the future and one eye in the present. And so I always dreamed of becoming an Olympic caliber athlete, being a professional runner and, and all the things that kind of came with that. But I don't think as a young athlete, you really understand what that means until you're there. And so my now comparatively old 24 year old self, I think looks back and realizes that every year um, I've learned a little bit something new, what it really means to be a pro runner. And, and, and sometimes the work as a pro is um, just as important off the track as on the track. Uh, so when I started athletics, I did dance and I did tennis and running was kind of like the third activity that I did. And through the club team in Queens, Metro Eagles, 
we would travel in the summer times to AAU and Junior Olympic competitions. And that was always really fun to me, getting to meet people from all over the country. And I think even when I graduated college, I didn't know what it meant to be a professional runner because I wasn't approached by brands or agents. So I kind of fell into it from finding a team to be a part of after being part of a team my whole life. And I found Central Park Track Club as well as running for the country Panama. So I didn't know what the future would hold, but I knew I wanted to keep competing. And I also wanted to be part of a team and continue that camaraderie. And again, I've still been able to travel and compete at a high level and it's been fun. And I'm also still discovering what that means every day. But um, balancing that in work has been a fun challenge to keep me engaged and that passion alive. I think the most important thing that I always like to share with younger runners is be the best you you can be. You don't always have to be the best runner. On any given day, you're not going to be the best student. On any given day, you're going to have troubles with a sibling, a friend, etc. But as long as you're making sure you're constantly working at getting a little better each day at your whole self, I think that's super important. And the reason I say that is I think as you're transitioning from middle school to high school or high school to college or college, you know, beyond, I think there's a real feeling amongst people that they suddenly have to know more about what their thing is. And as a result, they really kind of start to pigeonhole themselves where maybe your middle school self is what basketball player, volleyball player, runner, and then you get to high school and you feel like I can only do running. And that's totally fine. That's a fun thing to do. But make sure those basketball friends, those volleyball friends, you stay kind of attached to them. You stay a part of their circles. Don't feel like you almost have to cut things out to become too overly focused on one path. Um, the more you're really staying as well-rounded as possible, the better you're going to be able to handle those days where one of those kind of parts of you is struggling a little bit because you can lean on the other parts. I would say to take it day by day and enjoy the process because time goes by so fast and you'll look back and think that, you know, you've missed opportunities. Don't chase times or try to be better than other people. Like honestly, just be in love with yourself and the athlete that you want to be and let that carry you through your career, no matter where it takes you. When I started training in the fall, late summer, I was so far behind everybody else and practice was not fun because I was getting my butt kicked <laughs> every day. And right when we started transitioning to Icon, I don't know if it was the atmosphere or just the amount of time that went by, but I started to improve my performances and the group that I was behind, I was now leading. And I felt like that energy come back. So every day I just came with a plan and when you execute it, it makes you feel really good. But yeah, it, it was a, a long time coming and it wasn't like that from the beginning, but it's something like when you see yourself improving, it automatically just changes your mindset because then you get so much more focused and positive about being able to achieve your goal. I would definitely agree with Rolanda. Enjoy the process because it gets hard and it gets tough. But at the same time, you want to continue to stay motivated and just really enjoy your teammates. Make sure you're communicating with your coach because track is extremely important, but you also need a strong mental state at the same time. And without having a strong mental state, um, you're not going to be able to reach the goals that you want to reach to. What has kept you to continue training during the pandemic? I know it's definitely been like hard to like keep motivated. So what has like prompted you to continue training and like be hopeful? I guess I'll jump in real quick. Our coach during the pandemic did a really, really good job of keeping some normalcy in what we did to help us um, get through the pandemic because obviously it was really hard. There was a lot of terrible things happening. So it was the one positive thing that you could kind of have on your mind and look forward to. And then um, I think having races on the calendar, like actual races, helped me stay motivated, whereas a lot of people don't have things on their calendar to kind of look forward to. And I think you lose a lot of that motivation when there aren't any meets to kind of have on the future horizon. So definitely meets and then having that normalcy in our training routine has been helpful as well. Do you think you might like value track more than you did before um, since the pandemic? 
I'm happy to hop in for that one because I think my answer is a resounding yes. This became the part of my life that I think I was able to find the most, not just normalcy, but also connection through um, because I was able to talk to my friends through WhatsApp or, you know, still text them or call them after a run went really well to celebrate or if it didn't go as well as I wanted to kind of talk through that struggle. And I think a lot of the other kind of places in my life, it was just harder to still feel that same level of kind of day-to-day -day, um, connection because not everything you do on the day-to-day -day like you do with running. And so I think for me, it was this opportunity to value the sport for more than just the physical act of running, but realizing when you don't have those other kind of pillars like your teammates, your coach, um, even just like family support, I realize how much more kind of running means to me. My question is, if you were able to give yourself or your younger self like a piece of advice, what would it be? Yeah, so I think the most important thing that I would tell my younger self is to always keep it really fun. Um, and that sounds super simple and that sounds almost cliche, but the truth is I think it's really easy to make sport not fun because if we get overly competitive, not just with our teammates or our friends or our competitors, but also with ourself, um, I think it's harder to have those moments where post run, we're leaning on our friends, we're leaning on our family because we almost internalize it too much. Um, and so I would say, keep having your post race milkshake celebrations, keep having your kind of pre-race team dinners where you guys make new t-shirts the night before, keep kind of leaning into all that makes running running that doesn't have to do with the actual competition or training. And honestly, during the pandemic, if I didn't have that part of my running, I don't know what I have trained as much as I did. And I think being able to really maintain that level of fun throughout is what creates a sustainable career, creates a joyful career, and also just helps you run a little bit better. So even the selfish runner in me says, keep it fun. <laughs> when you've been running for a long time, your ability to PR often doesn't happen at the same rate as it does when you're a young athlete. So you have to enjoy the process and what you do day to day to continue to have that love for this sport. So that's like my one word of advice. One thing that I would say to my high school self is stop comparing myself to everyone else. Um, when you're lining up next to people, either on the track and field or just like in general, just like love yourself and how you look and like what you're about. Because at the end of the day, like, yeah, I'm running against girls that probably are like 10 times as muscle as me, but as long as you're motivated and strong and you're having fun out there, that's all that really matters. What is one thing that helps to shape who you are as an athlete, um, but um, not only as an athlete, but as a person in general? I think what I always like to kind of put as the forefront to my, um, how I define myself maybe as a person and as an athlete is somebody who's always very curious. And I think the reason is, is because unless we kind of attack each day with this question of, what's going to happen? <laughs> what can I do? What can I learn from today? And, and almost have that like positive curiosity. I think a lot of what we do as runners could become very monotonous because it often is kind of the same run or the same workout. And as a result, it is very easy to compare ourselves to the past. And so the more you can almost treat each day as a brand new opportunity to ask some new questions, learn something new, try to become a better runner, maybe not just through your fitness, but how you relate with your teammates, how you practice competing in the first 50 meters of your race versus the next day trying to see, hey, what happens if I kick it in for the last 50? Um, and so I think really just kind of treating each day as its own adventure and, and just being curious about what the day and what the year and what that career is going to bring is, is super important. I would say I would class myself as like almost like a dreamer um, a lot of times and like a goal setter. So it's, I have like my gold dream, my silver dream, and then like my bronze dream because you always want to have one kind of goal or dream that you might not be able to attain, um, but just kind of continue to focus to that. And that could be with anything. It could be with running. It could be with reading a certain amount of books. It could be honestly anything you want, but just making sure that you have some type of goals to achieve 
um, so that you kind of have something to strive to or look forward to in life. Time management is really important. There's only 24 hours in the day, so making sure I'm getting things done and being accountable for it are things that I developed as an athlete. I would say to just keep being amazing, be great teammates to you know your other training partners, and the sky's the limit on what you can accomplish. As long as you put the energy and the, the time into it, you're gonna get the results at the back end. So just keep your eye on the prize. I know that's cliche, but it's so true. <laughs> Some days you aren't going to have your best day. Some days you're not going to have your best races. But just know like as long as you're putting your work in and you just keep enjoying and loving the sport, as long as that love of the sport is still there, I feel like you want to continue it, whether you're PRing or not PRing. Because it shouldn't always just be about time. It should be about like the people around you and just being out there and being healthy and being able to run. Because um, at the end of the day, not everyone's able to do what we're doing.